Signor Antonio, many a time and oft in the Rialto you have rated me about my money and my usances. Still, I have borne it with a patient shrug, for sufferance is the badge of all our tribe. You call me misbeliever cutthroat dog and spit on my sacred gabardine and all for use of that which is mine own. Go to then, you come to me and you say, Shylock, we would have monies. You say so. You that did void your room upon my beard and foot me as you spur a stranger cur over the threshold. Monies is your suit. <laughs> what should I say? Should I not say, hath a dog monies? Is it possible a cur can lend you 3,000 ducats? Or should I bend low and on a bondsman's key with bated breath and whisper in humbleness say this? Fair sir, you spit on me on Wednesday last. You spurned me such a day. Another day you called me dog. And for these courtesies, I will lend you thus much money. Why, look you how you storm. An introduction or anything, do you think? Can you see yeah. my hands? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, it's okay. You can see my hands in mine, too. And Yeah, I love it. Give All us right, a little. let's go. <laughs> okay. Does my hair look really curly? Mm -hmm. Thanks. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. Brian, are you rolling? Yeah. Okay. Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Black Arts Matter. Hi, welcome back to another episode of Black Art Matters. I'm Tatiana, and I'm here today celebrating Latinx Heritage Month with the wonderful Victoria Cruz. Welcome. Hello, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to have you here today. I am super excited to be here. So Victoria, you're a student, a grad student over at SMU. Tell me a little bit about how you got to Dallas, a little bit about being an actor and being a performer, and a little bit about you. Yeah. Um I started acting uh, pretty young, um, all in the hopes of pretending all the time because that was fun to me. Mm -hmm. And I later went to college in Pensacola at UWF. Oh, wow. And it is about 20 minutes from the beach. So I decided to go to college at the beach. <laughs> and, it's a um, smart choice. <laughs> and not pay to go to college at UWF. So I took a break from school. And then I moved around a bit and explored and performed, did a lot of dinner theater and like fun little goofy things like that. And then I went back to school after I had my beautiful baby girl and got a degree in communications, wow. which I feel like every theater student should have. And then I began doing theater in Birmingham and found a mentor who I love. And she was like, you should go to grad school. You can do it. And I was like, what is that? <laughs> I was like, wait, they have what? grad school for theater? I can go to school for free? And I was like, yeah, let's try it. And I went to Erda's um, twice and then I fell upon SMU in Dallas. And so that's how I got here. That's fantastic. And you recently closed a show at SMU also. I did. I got to do Midsummer Night's Dream. I got to play Bottom and it was a dream come true. Yeah, I yeah, love classical What a fun work. role. It was so fun and so freeing and so not like anything I've ever done before. So yeah. it was amazing. What kind of roles and work have you done in the past? What are the types of roles and things that you normally accept? You know, usually I'm from Birmingham. So <laughs> we do a lot of like... Um, period plays. So I've done um, period plays. <laughs> I've played a lot of black, older black women, which has been amazing connecting with that. But I also got to do fun things like the angel from Angels in America, but me. So that was cool to explore as a black woman. Um, and I got to do an original musical, um, which was awesome. It was Whoa. about a black man who was enslaved in a zoo in the 1920s in New York at the Bronx Zoo. And so it was a story about his life and that was an experience, yeah. Wow, what a wild story. Oh yeah. And America. what a cool musical to get to be a part of too. Absolutely, it was an experience. Was it, I was gonna say, was it, was it a difficult experience, an exciting one? A you know, it was a learning experience for people who are not um, the global majority mm -hmm. and it was an experience for us who are a global majority and also being able to share that story in the heart of the civil rights movement yeah. in Birmingham, Alabama was just um, really great to offer to that community to say like, 
this is this exists everywhere you know we might have this light on us but this was happening everywhere and everybody was participating and now we can shine a light on it and change you know and accept our wrongs and move forward so it was really great I feel like a lot of people must have felt like felt seen too to have a piece like that being brought Absolutely. Yeah. That's amazing. So you talk a lot about your black identity, but you also identify as Latinx as well. Yes. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. What is that intersectionality like? Yeah. My father is Puerto Rican and he grew up in Spanish Harlem in New York. <gasps> His mom is from Fajardo, Puerto Rico. So that's like a little coastal town on the east corner <laughs> of Puerto Rico. Um, it was interesting having that be a part of my identity because I grew up in the deep South. I was raised black in the country, you know, and in the deep South. And so I didn't really start connecting it to that until I moved to Florida. And in Florida, there's a population of Latinas and Latinx. And so being able to own that and say, oh yeah, I am half Puerto Rican um, was cool. And my dad was in the war, in two wars. He served in Vietnam and he also served in Desert Storm. So he wasn't really like an influential aspect in my childhood. So I can't say that I grew up Puerto Rican, Mm. but like we were in New York visiting family, you know, getting infused (laughs) and then coming back home and getting infused again with a different race. So being biracial comes with its own set of issues, you know, or conflict within but being able to own it as you get older and really being able to take charge of what you claim has been a beautiful thing. Yeah, so I am yeah. multiracial and I am Latina and I am African-American. I love that. It, it must be exciting to be in the point of your life where you get to kind of blend those identities together and find yeah. what things speak to you. And Yes, yes. I went to New York for the summer <laughs> <laughs> and got to hang out with my half brothers who are full blood. Um, Puerto Rican and just being in that culture and seeing people that literally look like you but are not biracial but look like you and you're just like is that my aunt (laughs) is that my uncle and just like the music the food the taste the family is just it's a great reminder that you know you have all of these branches that already exist in your body but sometimes they just need a little wake up to be like no that feels good because it's part of your blood and in your genes you can't escape it you know yeah It's part of who you are. Yeah, it's who I am. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like your identities have shaped either the way you create art or the way that you tell stories? Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you're not what people deem to be the majority, if you're not white, you know, or and you grow up in a country that has these founding fathers, Mm -hmm. right, you don't feel a part of things. So you spend a lot of your childhood escaping who you are you spend especially if you're an actress right oh yeah (laughs) you're like looking for the monologues that don't stereotype you yep don't specifically mention me right like I can be I can be anything right you know and and you waste time doing that you waste time escaping the gift that you've been given from birth which is this is who I am so I spent eh, 10 15 (laughs) years you know just no I'm not that I'm not, I can be all of the things. Right. And the last three to five being like, oh, I'm all of those things. And have you seen my version of it? Because you've never seen my version of it, right. you know? And like, and then opening that up to my Latina side where I'm like, oh, this woman is Puerto Rican. I'm Afro-Latina. That means I can play this part. And oh, wow, it sounds like me. Oh, wow, I relate to those things, you know? Like we're more alike than we are different yeah and like once you stop trying to avoid who you are (laughs) you will come and find all of the gifts that the universe has for you you and you'll find all those roles that just kind of click and you're like wait you're right gosh I just met Marisol I just read that and I'm like we have to do this it's such a good I've I love that script we have to do this we do (laughs) and and I can do that yeah and I am that you know You are all of the things. Just own it. Yes. Yes. The more you start owning it, the easier your life will be, I feel. I agree. I feel like I had a very similar experience where I had to be like, I have to confront this. I've been avoiding it. Accept it. (laughs) Accept it. And it's okay because your avoidance is also part of your journey. And now you can grab on even tighter, you know? So if you were to go back in time and tell your young self one piece of advice or give yourself something, what would you say? Mm. I would say go to rehearsal 
<laughs> go to rehearsal. Stop, stop not going to rehearsal. Go. I said, go to rehearsal. And I'd also say, hey, I am Victoria Cruz. You are Victoria Cruz. And you can't change that. So yeah. stop trying. Just say yes to everything. Say yes, yes, yes. You know, just say, I am who I am. And that's cool. Yeah. Gosh, wouldn't you value that at 17? Honestly. And I feel, I, I don't know about you. I do feel like some people would tell me that. I just had trouble believing it. Absolutely. I wish that those voices had been louder. So yeah, I wish somebody would have like smacked me a few times yeah. <laughs> and then like sit down. I have something to tell you for an hour and you're going to listen. You know, this is serious. Because I mean, who listens at 17? Yeah, that's fair. No, but if you came back as you at 17, you'd be like, whoa, mind blown from the future. I need to listen. <laughs> she has something to tell me. <laughs> so yeah, I would say be who you are. Yeah. yeah. And now that you're on this part of your journey, what do you think is next for you? What kind of projects or ideas or dreams do you see for yourself, for the for the theater community, for the world? Yeah. yeah. I, ah, uh, mm, well, I love classical work. I don't, I, I love classical work. Class, classical work. <clears throat> Edit that out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love classical work. And for a long time, I just loved it because it was beautiful and it was relatable, even 400 years later, you know? Yeah. And something about that made me feel like it was for me. Like, if that makes sense. When I read a, mar a monologue from Margaret, Queen Margaret, I was like, how does she sound just like my mom? Like, how does she understand grief or how does she understand love? Like, nobody understands love. I know people yeah. and they don't understand, but Shakespeare understands. You know, and I think because it was so transcendent, I was like, I need to do that. And not only that, but I need other women who look like me and other girls that look like me to be like, man, she's so alive when she does that. And I couldn't tell that that was written 400 years ago. Like, right. I can do that too. Like, if I could see more of me in Shakespeare, I would be so happy, like, so happy. And it's something that... I hope to spread like I hope to go and work for a Shakespeare company and some little girl who's my little girl's age who's like seven or eight is just like struck and they're like man I want to do that like if I can inspire other girls who look like me to say I can do that job done right because representation is so important and seeing yourself is so important like we watched Vivo the other day yeah and my daughter was like that girl's like me. I was like, it's the animated like movie you. on Netflix, right? Yes, it's oh, an animated exciting. movie on Netflix, and it's a Latina girl, and she is awkward, and she owns it, and she's like, I don't care. I like staying in my room and being weird. And I'm like, that's my kid. She's weird. <laughs> but just it. representation, like the simple fact of like seeing yourself, is so empowering to do anything. It doesn't have to be theater. It doesn't have to be film or TV. Like. You can go be a congresswoman. You can go own your own business because I was just out here standing in front of a thousand people and you saw yourself. So I think that will be enough reward for me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was so wonderful to have you join us. Ah, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for, for celebrating me. Latinx Heritage Month with us here. Thanks for including <laughs> me. I think it's beautiful and important. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that was so good. Oh, yay. I.